Hi there. In this video we're going to cover blow-by produced by engines and catch cans and what their purpose and function is. Now let's start with blow-by. So all engines produce blow-by. So what exactly is it? So if you can imagine, here's a piston. During the compression stroke, so when the piston goes up, some of the gases in the pressurized chamber of the cylinder will blow past the compression rings and the sealing rings of the piston. Now this is not so much prevalent during the compression stroke, but more so during the combustion stroke. So when the fuel is ignited with the air mixture and the piston is driven down, some of that excess pressure or the gases produced will go past the piston and the sealing rings and into the crankcase. Additionally to the combustion gases that escape, these gases can also pass through the piston through poor design of the actual piston or late opening of exhaust valves or oversized cylinder bores and engine wear and tear and that's a big part and that's when you get poor piston sealing and damaged pistons. The other thing that contributes to blow-by are turbochargers. So turbochargers send compressed air through the air intake and these effectively build up and increase the amount of pressure or the air available for combustion and if the rings aren't sealing properly then more gases will escape into the crankcase. So what actually constitutes blow-by and why is it heavily regulated in the emissions regulations? So blow-by can typically consist of air, hydrocarbons, water, soot, carbon residue, engine oil, particulate matter, NOx, sulfur and more. So it can be quite harmful for you and for the environment. Now there's three ways you can reduce blow-by without having to do anything to your engine. So the three points are engine load, engine speed and engine torque. Now diesel engines especially need to be operated under load. So what that means is the engine's actually working and it's not idling around doing nothing. And this is because running a diesel engine under load allows it to heat up to its operating temperature, so its ideal operating temperature. And at this temperature, all the metal clearances are at their ideal. So less gases will escape past the piston ring. Now the second point is engine speed, so RPM. By raising the RPM, you will naturally decrease the amount of blow-by. It seems counterintuitive, but the point is you're heating the engine up more and it's operating more and more into its ideal operating temperature. Now the third point is engine torque. So each engine has a peak torque and it might be at a certain RPM or a certain range of RPM. Now when an engine operates at peak torque, it actually produces more blow-by and higher torque engines will typically produce more blow-by. So what we can gather from these three things, you need an optimal balance between load, speed and torque. And that can be quite hard to determine. So the fourth method of reducing blow-by is not actually reducing blow-by, it's filtering blow-by. So blow-by is also known as crankcase ventilation and these gases are not allowed to be emitted into the environment. It wasn't up until the 1960s that this occurred. Before then, they were allowed to vent to the atmosphere. But now, they have to be closed and vented back into the engine. Now, in this particular engine, the crankcase ventilation comes through here, goes down this pipe, and directly into the turbocharging system. So you'll see that this is after the air cleaner, which is over here, and before the turbocharger. Now, blow-by was never of real concern for diesel engines until they introduced direct injection. So when the blow-by enters the fresh air intake, it goes through the intake manifold and then into the engine. Now, with port or indirect injection, the fuel helped to spray that blow-by off the valves and through the air intake. So that prevented any residue, any carbon from building up over time. But now with direct injection or common rail direct injection fuel systems, the fuel is injected directly into the combustion chamber. So it bypasses all the valves and the air intake. And so now we don't get that washing of the blow by past the valves. And what this can do is it can cause valves to become sticky, carbon to build up and eventually block the air intake system. And when the air intake system starts blocking up, you get reduced performance, reduced engine power, poorer emissions and so forth. Now in order to prevent that build up, a PCV separator like this, or also known as an oil catch can, can be introduced into that blow-by system between the engine and the turbocharger to get all that oily mist out of that blow-by and prevents that carbon built up in the air intake manifold. It should also be noted, because the blow-by is fed into the turbocharger, 
it'll eventually coat that turbocharger with oil. It'll coat this compressed air turbocharger output line with oil. It'll coat your intercooler with oil and also the air intake over here with oil. And that's not very good for your engine. So where should an oil catch can be fitted? Now see this hose here. That's our blow-by or our crankcase ventilation. So fitting a catch can should go in between the engine and the turbocharging air intake there. Now as you can see, this particular engine hasn't yet been fitted with a catch can. But it is highly recommended that it is one day. So what you'd like to do is to reroute this hose to go into the catch can intake port, which is this lower one here, and then this upper port, which is your outlet, that should get fed back into the turbocharger. Now it's important to note such a system is perfectly legal because you're not venting any emissions or gases into the environment. So this closed system is perfectly legal and the other benefit is you're preventing or helping to reduce that amount of carbon buildup in the air intake. So it's a win-win situation. Now I'd just like to clarify a misconception here. Some people state that catch cans will help clean or keep clean the EGR valve and that's not entirely true because the EGR valve over there is a completely separate system to the PCV air intake system. So the EGR will feed exhaust gases into the air intake but that's on a separate line whereas the PCV will also feed those gases into the air intake but again that's a separate system altogether. Now, it may help keep the EGR clean only because you're not burning oil anymore in the actual combustion chambers. But still, the engine is passing exhaust gases through that valve and the catch can is completely independent of that system. So there you have it guys. I hope that clarifies the purpose of a catch can, what blow-by and PCV emissions are and how to prevent them blocking your air intake. If you'd like to know more info about this catch can, this is actually an Isuzu manufactured genuine parts catch can fitted to some of their trucks. Check out my video in the link above. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.